Hello, this is Jill from Paper Daisy Crafting. Thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator here in the UK, showcasing products from Stampin' Up! to show you how you can use them in your own paper craft projects. This is my project today. I showed you this on Saturday, I think, last Saturday, for a blog hop, which was um, all to do with showcasing products from the new mini catalogue. Um, and this is using this set merriest moments which I was lucky enough to win in a team challenge so the, we've got um, a really nice stamp set with holly ponzettias some foliage and then some nice sentiments lovely die set and also I haven't got it here but we've got a lovely um, embossing folder as well which I showed you um, the other day as well it's a really nice set um, I've made mine a square card, so I'm going to show you how to do that. I happen to have some square envelopes in my stash, um, but they are quite easy to come by, these size square envelopes. So I'm going to start with a piece of our thick wisp, um, basic white um, A4. And what I'm going to do... Oh, just lost my scoring blade here a sec. Scoring blade just fell out of my um, trimmer. We are going to cut trim this card down to 14 centimeters so the long way with the short the short edge along the top I'm going to trim at 14 and then we're going to turn round and we're going to score this one at 14 so our, our card plate base is basically going to be 14 centimeters square so I'm going to just burnish that and then I'm going to come back in and I'm going to trim that little bit off so that will be 14 centimeters there should be there we go we trim that off and then we've got a lovely card base edges meet perfectly that's great oh while I'm here with my trimmer I'm just going to take this piece of cardstock which is just over 14 centimeters long so if I show you it just slightly overlaps here and I'm going to cut this down to four and a half centimeters which is about one and three quarter inches sorry i know i should say the inches as well because i know a lot of my um my followers do use inches because they're in america the card blank is five and a half inches square so if that helps you right can't remember which one of these was which now which one was four and a half muddled them up mm, yes that one right we'll use that one right now we need to do a bit of stamping. So I've got these two stamps already locked onto um, size A clear blocks. It's this medium. So there's a big, medium and small um, holly leaf. We're using the medium one and we're using the berries as well today. So we just need a piece of spare cardstock. So I've got a little piece here. I've already... Um, prepared some of these but I just wanted to show you what to do so I'm just going to do one or two so I don't know if you can see on my stamp pad but I've actually I showed you on another video I use a spoon handle and I've just this was quite a juicy um stamp pad so I just use it to just move the ink along like that and then you get an area of your stamp pad that's not quite as inky but you haven't you haven't um wasted any of the ink um, and that means that you get the detail on the stamp. Sometimes if it's too juicy, you lose the detail. So I'm just going to stamp one of the leaves. And that's in soft sea foam. I'm using different colours this time, you will notice, paler colours. And this one is in Blushing Bride. There we go. And I've done the others that I need, but I just wanted to show you. So, I'm just going to move all this stuff out of the way. And bring in my die cutter. And we need the medium holly die. It's not on that one. Right, the medium holly die is there. And the berries is there. I always keep my dies. Move that there. Um, 
on a magnetic sheet in the stamp case with the stamp set that they go with if I can. I have got a box of standalone dies as well. So I'm just using a little bit of washi tape to anchor that down. Just positioning this really carefully. If you've got a magnetic plate, which I don't know whether they're available, whether the magnetic plate is available for the mini. Because mm, I never use them. I don't use a magnetic plate. I had one for my big shot and I never really got on with it. So I've never bothered buying one for the new machines. I just use washi tape all the time. There we are. So I've now got enough leaves, but I just wanted to show you how I did those. On my previous card, I used um, shaded spruce and real red, but today we're using soft sea foam and blushing bride. Now, the last thing that we need to do while I've got my die cutter out is emboss this. And I think what I'm going to do is use a different embossing folder. On the one that I showed you, I used um, uh, Tasteful Textures. Today, if I can find it, I'm going to use, I think it's called Dots and Checks. I think this is what this is called and I'm going to use this one today so using a slightly different one you can use any embossing folder that's in your stash of course right and on here it will tell me no it won't let me find the other pads tell me which ones I need for the embossing folder oh embossing folder I need one so I need this one and I need this one which is three and it's a good idea make sure that's straight in there. It's a good idea to put your embossing folder through your cutter spine side first so that the spine goes through the cutter first. Oh yeah that's right I can feel the pressure on there. Yeah. And that will just give us a different look. Oh, I've got a mark on that um, piece. I might just use a different piece then. Right let's start that again. Oh, let's find a different piece of cardstock. Cut to the right size. I just don't want that mark. That mark, may, it may fall where one of the holly leaves is, so it might not be seen, but just in case, I'm just going to do that again. So, four and a half by just over 14, because I want to be able to trim it off myself at the end. And then we'll just pop that through again. Like so. I can get it open there we go let's try that you don't want a mark on something just spoiling your project so I'll probably find a use for that piece of embossing at some point but either something will hide that mark or I'll just cut it off and use a smaller piece right there we go and that's beautiful that one that's no problem so Get rid of all my plates here and my die cutter and we're ready to go to put the card together. So we've got our card base, we're going to take our piece of embossed card and we're going to put that across there. Now if you want it to be really straight and you don't think you can do it by eye, you can do two little pencil marks. I'm doing mine at three and a half centimetres, or I'll give you the inches in a sec. One and three eighths. So, but it doesn't, it doesn't have to be precise. You could just do it by eye and decide where you want it. And that is going to go across. And those, you can just put that up to there and then just cover those up and that make sure you get it nice and straight. If you're a real perfectionist and want to make sure it goes really straight. I tend to. Some, occasionally I get things and I, after they're re well and truly stuck, I look at them and think, that's not quite straight and it offends me. So I like to be precise. There we go. And just put that up there. Make sure it's straight and stick that down. And then I'm just gonna come in with my snips and snip off the excess so that I know that I get a really flush edge at the edges of my card. You could cut it to exactly 14 and try and stick it down but I'm, 
I'm never sure that I'm going to be able to do that correctly, so I always cut off a little bit. Right, there we go. Right, now then, we are going to measure seven centimetres and put a mark because I want to know that that's where the centre is. Now, like I said, I've got all these leaves already and most of them have already got dimensionals on. I've just got a couple more to put dimensionals The one that I did to put dimensionals on. So I'm using two minis on each of those. Um, and right, so this is going to go, so I'm bearing in mind where the centre line is. Just going to put them like so. So take off the backing of our dimensionals and just angle them so that they look like a little sprig of holly in the center of our embossed strip like so and there we go and then what I did was I took another dimensional tucked it under there so that the ends, the ends of the leaves are now resting on a dimensional. Take off the backing and then put your berry on and that will be enough to adhere your berries. Oh, I'm liking this colour scheme. Um, so another one. So let's just think where this has got to go. Yeah, I think that's fine. We'll pop this one on could measure this one as well if you wanted to but once I've got one on I kind of know that I can judge I just need to make sure the next one I do is the same distance away um, it's the centre one that you really need to get right and that's going there and again take a little dimensional pop it under the end of the leaves Take the backing off and then pop your berries on top of that dimensional and then the whole thing is raised. So the last one, so now I can look at this one and I can make sure that I position this one exactly the same distance away as the other one. This one take the dimensionals off put that on and the last time pop a little dimensional under here and take it off and pop your berries on oh, I'm liking this color this is quite a sweet color for Christmas I think isn't it there we go. Right, you can rub out your pencil line. Got another little, oh no, that's come off good. I was going to say there's another little mark on my emboss strip. Right, now what we need is a little, two little strips of um, soft sea foam. So I have, I have here a box that I keep all my offcuts of all my different colours. This is the, this is my subtles box, which of course is where soft sea foam will be lurking. And I just need a scrap of soft sea foam here we go there we go that I can cut two scraps on don't like to waste anything so here we go so I'm going to bring my trimmer in and I'm going to line up on this side of the um, cutting board I'm going to set it at three millimeters so you can check it's in line here as well and here make sure you don't move it as you put the card down and then you get a nice little strip that is just going to finish this off really nicely can you see what a difference that makes so we just need another one of those just makes a huge difference and of course you could back this embossed panel with soft sea foam and just have it overlapping a little bit but this saves a lot of card so 
this is the way that I do it. Right, okay. So I can trim these off. They don't need to be quite this long. So let's just trim them off a bit. And then a little bit of Tombow on the back there. You want to spread it out with a cocktail stick so that you don't spoil your project by having blobby glue squeeze out and then just butt it up against the edge of the embossed panel because that is slightly raised you can get that to fit along there really nicely and then the next one there we go And there we go. There. Now, oh, that's not straight. Let's make that straight. All we need to do now is trim those ends off. And then we just need a greeting. So the greeting that I'm using is my favourite Christmas greeting at the minute. And it's from... Um, from um, Snowflake Wishes. And it just says Merry Christmas. So it's from this, this set. Get rid of all my bits. Um, snowflake wishes for a Merry Christmas, but I don't want the snowflake wishes for. I just want the Merry Christmas. Now, what I've done is I've actually cut mine apart. But actually, <coughs> if you wanted it for something like this, you could just stamp the whole greeting and then cut out the Merry Christmas so that you've just got the Merry Christmas. I know some of you don't like the idea of butchering your stamps. To me, I just think they're tools, um, and so I will use them as I want them. I won't worry about it too much. There we go. Right, I've got that mounted on there. Yep, nice and straight. And I'm going to do it in soft sea foam again. Just on a little bit of card. little bit of basic white card stock. You could do it straight onto your card if you wanted to. Um, I tend not to do that just because I know what I'm like and I might mess it up and mess the whole card up. Although you could go in after that and just put a stick one on top anyway to cover your mistake up. So I'm just cutting this by hand. Won't be as accurate as doing it on the trimmer but for the moment, I think that's accurate enough. And that goes there. And that just finishes our card off. Just a little bit of Tombow. And there we go. And we're done. There, so that's that one. Actually, I think I prefer that one to the one I made first. And that's that one. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching that project today and really enjoyed making it. I really like that card. They'll go in my stash to send people at Christmas time. Um, hope you might have a go. Hope I might have um, inspired you with the Merry Moment, Merriest Moments set. But everything that I've used is listed below the video in the description. And there's a link there to, over to my blog as well. And my blog is really my hub where you'll find everything. You'll find my contact details, details about all my latest projects, details about my monthly shopping code, which if you use, I'll send you a free gift the next month. Um, details about how to sign up for my newsletter or email notifications to my blog. Everything is over there. Um, anyway, that's it from me today. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a lovely day and I'll be back very, very soon.